So it seems today we're going to be talking about a little film that came out quite recently, that being a film under the title Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. Wait a minute. Is there any good video footage of Blood and Honey anywhere? I know the story of Jesus! Damn it, it's just a bunch of crappy cam rips at the moment. Alright, well, maybe I can do that for a Blockbusters video, since those don't typically use a lot of clips. But, um... Think. What can I do that's Winnie the Pooh related for Chris T. Ian? Say no. Stop that. It's not okay with me. No. Too smart for strangers it is. Oh, uh, correction. I'm sorry. My mistake. Uh, according to the schedule, we we're going to be looking at a film called uh, Too Smart for Strangers starring Winnie the Pooh. So we begin on a soundstage or a set of some kind, it's clearly not filmed in a real forest, as we see a man in a costume of Winnie the Feces singing the title song for this movie. Too small for strangers, that's me, Winnie the Pooh. As he meets up with his good friend Piglet to talk about a very serious subject, stranger danger. A stranger is something a piglet is not. Oh, well, you see right there? He gets it. You know, nowadays there's lots of people running around saying that they don't like pigs and that they want them to fry like bacon and all that kind of thing. But no, you see, th this bear right here, he gets it. A stranger may be someone you've seen in your neighborhood or places you go, but you don't really know that person. There are good strangers and bad strangers. And some strangers, the bad ones, want to hurt kids and bears. Well, you are a bear, and in the Constitution, it says something about right to bear arms, so if someone comes messing with you in your woods, you could defend yourself and unsheathe your claws and maul them if you want to. As they continue walking, they keep talking about stranger danger until they get to their treehouse and continue the conversation over a pot of honey even though there were a bunch of honey pots scattered all over the woods earlier. Better hope that Jordan Peterson isn't watching this poo. He'll tell you that you better clean up your room, as well as your forest, and then warn you about the dangers of Marxism. What was I talking about again? Oh yeah, uh, stranger danger. Let, let's see what they're talking about with that. Number one, say no to strangers. He is right about that. I mean, after all, haven't you seen that one viral video from that local neighborhood icon known as Sam? No means no! Ah! <laughs> Once again, me and this bear, on the same page. Now let's see what the tiger, who bounces around a lot and shakes people down in liquor store parking lots like a methamphetamine addict has to say. Well, it seems they're talking about the exact same subject, as Tyga and a baby kangaroo indulge in the discussion of the subject of strangers. Well, then it sure is a good thing that everyone in these woods just happens to know who everyone is and that no one is a stranger. Because, hypothetically, this is an adult talking to a child while a parent is not present. And so technically that would make this stranger danger. Or at least that's how someone without proper context like me would see it. You should avoid unsafe places. What are they? Places where there are no other people around. Look, there are alleys construction sites? So in other words, stay as far away from cities as much as possible. Once again, I really like the advice they're giving in this film. Karen knows she stayed too late, and she doesn't want to get in trouble. So, she decides to take a shortcut. Now again, going back to hypotheticals, this is a grown man in a furry tiger outfit watching a little girl try to walk home in a bad part of town. You do see how this could possibly be misconstrued in some way, right? And so, the right thing to do in this scenario is run away and tell your father about it. But that's just one example. Let's see what these two little girls do in the next scenario as a strange man approaches them on the sidewalk. Well, well, aren't you pretty little girls? What are your names? Okie dokie. Now, what would you do? 
I wouldn't tell them my name. <laughs> That's a tiggerific answer, Roo. But they didn't seem very friendly, Tigger. Wouldn't it be all right to say hello? And maybe shake hands? No, 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 Peru. Uh-uh. Oh, whoa, okay, whoa. Everybody calm down, okay? I, I know this is a hot button issue, but we don't have to get all excited and lose our heads, Tigger. Oh, oh, wait, I, I'm, I'm so sorry. I, I didn't mean to mispronounce that. It's Tyga, sorry. You have to forgive me. I'm not too familiar with the Winnie the Pooh lore, so I, I believe that that's his name, correct? Scream and kick and bite. Fight with all your might and try to get away. So with that life lesson learned, the little kangaroo child heads home to her mother, a kangaroo woman who wears nothing but an apron and nothing underneath. You know, and maybe this one's just me, but I'm starting to think that this film is just a little bit weird. My, my, I certainly learned a lot from Tigger and Roo. So far in this film, we have seen bears, pigs, donkeys, tigers, and kangaroos, which, for your information, don't actually live in North American woods like some of these other animals do. They actually live in outbacks and jungles, thank you very much. Because clearly, questioning things like that in a program aimed at very little children is a very big brain moment, I assure you. Now let's hear a little bit from this rabbit who's wearing a top hat and a cape. Watch our friend Timmy and see if you can find the trick. Hey, kid, come here a second. I seem to have lost my dog somewhere around here, and I was wondering if you might help me try to find him. No, sorry, I can't do that. Ah, a typical scenario that we've seen in some of these Stranger Danger PSA films from the 80s and 90s. We've heard it mentioned in the lyrics of a song in Yellow Dino. It was the first time Corny the Alien got kidnapped before being put into the back of a pickup truck he could have easily gotten out of. And now we see an example of it in this film where a very young copper cab rolls away on a bicycle after telling the strange man to go away. We then see a few more kids being tempted to go into strangers' cars, one guy looking like he's straight out of the 1980s, and another group of kids almost falling for the I'm a friend of your parents trick. At least those kids are smart. They didn't fall for the trick like Corny the Alien did in his PSA video. Anyway, it's time to hear from the supposed smartest animal in the woods, the owl. Well, not to be mean, but I personally don't care much for owls. I mean, it's bad enough that we have to learn these lessons from a bear. Don't people realize that bears are actually godless marauding murder machines that kill anything they see? Owls, on the other hand, that's more personal indifference. I don't hate them, it, it's just a cultural thing, you understand. Owl appears in his home and lets the children watching this know how they can protect themselves when they are left home alone. What's your name? Ryan. Is your mom there, Ryan? She's not home. What would you have done? Um, maybe don't leave your five-year-old child home alone? I mean, I'm not one for common sense, but would it really hurt to hire a babysitter or maybe get uh, a neighbor you trust to watch the child while you step out instead of just leaving your child home alone like that? You see, after Ryan hung up, he had a funny feeling. So he called his next door neighbor, Mrs. Jones, and she said she'd come right over. Bye. You see, if the neighbor was quick enough to answer the child's phone call, then why couldn't they just be watching them from the beginning? Geez, Kappa just couldn't come soon enough. I am not one for government intervention, but I seriously think that we need programs that need to teach people how to be better parents to take care of their children. I never tell anybody my name. I wouldn't tell my mom wasn't home. You should never, ever say you're home alone. Then why are you talking to these cameramen? I'm starting to miss the brutal honesty of Yellow Dino. Back with Owl, he breaks into a musical number, telling kids what they can do to protect themselves. When you're home alone, with no one else around, experience has shown, you'll be safe and sound if you follow the advice that I have found. Rabbit shows up through the magical powers of editing and continues to lecture the kids about tricks that adults might use on them. 
And the last, one of the tricks that they don't mention is that they're using woke propaganda television to brainwash children. I know this because I haven't actually seen any of these shows, but I have instead seen screenshots of them on Twitter and Truth Social. Now you see, one day when I actually have children, I'm going to give them nothing but a steady diet of Prager U kids. Wake up, sheeple parenting. After another example where a girl is approached by an adult looking for her mother while she's playing with this weird puppet toy, I will get to visit from the lispy tiger we saw earlier. Who's there? <laughs> Who do you think it is? It's the one and only Tigger. Ho oh, ho, well that's no stranger. So by that logic, no one is actually a stranger as long as they dress as a piglet or a Tigger. Okay, so you're telling me that kids should trust this and this. Boom. Pwned by facts and logic, owl. Smartest animal in the Hundred Acre Woods, my foot. Seriously, why are more than half the people in this town leaving their elementary kids home alone? Maybe the lesson isn't just in Stranger Danger, maybe it's also about deadbeat parenting. I think we should tell our friends that danger doesn't always come from strangers. It can be from someone you know. No, 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 no. They're touching. It's not okay, Pooh. You don't understand. Oh, yes, Piglet. You don't know what you're doing here. That's the kind of touching that gives you a funny feeling inside. <laughs> Say no. Stop that. It's not okay with me. No, don't do that. I have the right to see. My body is my very own, that's how it's got to be. I've learned this is the time to say it's not okay with me. Whoa, okay, I I'm taking back what I said earlier about the brutal honesty. This is, this is getting very hard to watch. No, no, don't touch me. Don't touch me, Dara, or I'll tell. If you touch me again, I'll tell my dad. No, stop touching me. Don't touch me. Okay, that's it. We're wrapping this up. This is getting ridiculous. Always tell your parents or someone you trust when someone tries to touch your private parts. So that was too smart for strangers, and if anything, we should be glad that we've completed the unholy trinity of bad PSA movies about stranger danger on this show. Much like Corny and Yellow Dino, the intentions are good, but sadly, some of the information, and definitely the production value, is incredibly dated by today's standards. If anything, this has the opposite problem of Yellow Dino in that this one feels like it kind of tap dances around the more key issues. They want to talk about these subjects, but I don't know, maybe using these characters wasn't the best way of doing that. Whereas Yellow Dino was a little too upfront with what they were saying to the point of being uncomfortable, this doesn't go that deep enough into very difficult and heavy subject matter. Though like Yellow Dino, when it gets uncomfortable, it really gets uncomfortable. Now even though I've never watched this cartoon as a child, mainly because I was raised to believe that Disney are a bunch of Satanists, and I now protest Disney because they are part of the woke agenda, or at least that's what Facebook tells me, all I can say is this. This is hopefully the last time we'll ever have to see anything even remotely scary or creepy come out of this franchise. I'm Chris T. Ian, may Jesus be with you, and this is just another friendly reminder that this tape is more than likely banned in China.